In this video, we're going to focus on calculating the internal energy of gases. So in this example, we need to calculate the internal energy of a monoatomic gas. So what formula do we need in order to do this? The internal energy is equal to the number of moles, represented by the symbol N, times the molar heat capacity at constant volume, multiplied by the temperature. So we have four moles of gas. Now what is the molar heat capacity? at constant volume for a monatomic gas. The formula that you need is this. It's CV is equal to 3 over 2 times R. So it's 3 over 2 times 8.3145. And so this is going to be 12.47. So CV is 12.47 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now the temperature is 300 Kelvin. So the unit moles will cancel and the unit Kelvin will cancel. So it's 4 times 12.47 times 300. And so the internal energy is going to be 14,964 joules. So that's the answer to the first part of the problem. Now, let's move on to part B. Calculate the internal energy of 5 moles of a diatomic gas at 400 Kelvin. So, N is 5 in this example. Now, we need to calculate the new CV value. For a diatomic gas, it's going to be 5 over 2 times R. So, it's 5 over 2 times 8.3145. And so that's going to be 20.79. And then the units are joules per mole per Kelvin. And the temperature is 400 Kelvin in this example. So 5 times 20.79 times 400 Kelvin. The answer is going to be 41,580 joules. So that's the internal energy of this particular diatomic gas. Number two, what is the change in the internal energy of three moles of argon if the temperature increases from 300 Kelvin to 500 Kelvin? Now, what type of gas is argon gas? Would you say it's a monatomic gas or a diatomic gas? Now, argon consists of one atom per particle, so it's a monatomic gas. And we know that the molar heat capacity for a monatomic gas is 3 over 2 times R. So it's 3 times 8.3145 divided by 2. So it's going to be 12.47. So to calculate the change in the internal energy of the system, it's going to be NCV delta T. So in this example, in part A, we have 3 moles of argon gas. And the molar heat capacity at constant volume for argon is 12.47 joules per mole per Kelvin. Now the change in temperature goes from 300 Kelvin to 500 Kelvin. So that's final minus initial, 500 Kelvin minus 300 Kelvin. So the change is 200 times 3 times 12.47. So the change in the internal energy for part A is positive 7,482 joules. So as we can see, the internal energy is directly related to temperature. Because the temperature of this gas increased, the internal energy increased as well, which means that the change in the internal energy is positive. Now let's move on to the next part, part B. What is the change in the internal energy of 4 moles of nitrogen gas if the temperature decreases from 400 Kelvin to 300 Kelvin. So nitrogen gas is a diatomic gas. There's two atoms per molecule. And so CV is going to be 5 over 2 times R. So that's 5 times 8.3145 divided by 2. So that's about 20.79 
joules per mole per Kelvin. So now we could use the same formula. Delta U is going to equal N C V delta T. So in this example, we have four moles of N2 gas. And the molar heat capacity at constant volume is 20.79. And the change in temperature, final minus initial, the final is 300, the initial is 400. So the change is negative 100. So 4 times 20.79 times negative 100, that's going to be negative 8,316 joules. So as the temperature decreases, as the gas cools down, the internal energy of the gas will decrease as well. And so that's why the change is negative. Now let's move on to the last part, part C. Estimate the change in the internal energy of 7 moles of a gas with a gamma ratio of 1.3 if the temperature increases from 300 Kelvin to 700 Kelvin. So how can we do this problem? What formula do we need? Well first we need to calculate CV using the gamma ratio and here's a simple formula that can help you to do so. The molar heat capacity at constant volume is going to equal R divided by the gamma ratio minus 1. So R is 8.3145 the gamma ratio is 1.3, and then let's subtract it by 1. So that's going to be 8.3145, and 1.3 minus 1 is 0.3. So it's R divided by 0.3 for this example. So the molar heat capacity for this gas is 27.715. So now we could use the same formula as we've been using. So that's going to be N. CV delta T. So we have 7 moles of a gas and CV is 27.715 and the change in temperature is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So 700 minus 300 is 400 Kelvin. So it's going to be 400 times 27.715 times 7. And so this works out to be 77,000 602 joules. So that's the change in the internal energy of the system. So now let's review the formulas that we went over today. So if you need to calculate the internal energy of a gas, use this equation. It's NCV times the temperature, and the temperature has to be in Kelvin. Now if you wish to calculate the change in the internal energy, it's NCV times delta T. Now, when dealing with a change in temperature, it can be in Kelvin or Celsius. The difference doesn't matter. So let me write that. You can put it in K or C. Now, if you don't see a triangle, it has to be in Kelvin. So just something that you may want to know. Now, to calculate CV, it's 3 over 2R for a monatomic gas like helium or neon or even argon. For a diatomic gas, it's 5 over 2 times R. So for like a nitrogen gas or oxygen gas. And if you have a gas that has like 3 atoms per molecule, you can approximate it using this. But there's going to be some deviations here. So for CO2, it's approximately 7 over 2 times R. But there's going to be some variation. Keep that in mind. Now, if you're given the gamma ratio, you can get a good estimate of the molar heat capacity at constant volume using this equation. It's R divided by the gamma ratio minus 1. So these are some formulas that you may want to write down when dealing with uh, gases. By the way, if you want to find more physics videos and uh, practice problems relating to thermodynamics, I've created a longer video. It's like a three-hour video. If you type in thermodynamics, PV diagrams, you should see it come up. So you could find a lot more practice problems if you really want to master this topic, or even if you have a test coming up. And if you need help in other topics, you can visit my channel. Um, I have playlists on physics. I also do videos on chemistry, like general chemistry, organic chemistry. Or if you need help with math, like algebra, geometry, trig, pre-calculus, or even calculus, I do have playlists on those topics as well. So if you have an exam in 
in any one of those uh, subjects, feel free to check out my channel and then just search out the video that can best help you. So thanks again for watching this uh, video and uh, feel free to comment if you like it and have a good day.